is Good Friday. Maybe you went and prayed with other folks from our church this morning for the city of Exeter. Maybe you attended the Exeter Cathedral Good Friday service with Christians from across the city. Maybe this is the first chance you've had to sit down and reflect on the fact that it is Good Friday, the day when we remember the crucifixion of Jesus. This is just a short video that I hope will encourage you um, this Good Friday as we prepare for Easter Sunday. You can watch it at your own leisure um, and just reflect on a few points that I make relating to a song that I'm going to share with us now. Um, so let's have a listen to that song and then I'll share a few reflections some music to you. It's that album by 
Sovereign Grace music that I've been enjoying over the last few weeks. I don't know if you found yourself singing along. Um, it was a temptation for me to sing, but I wouldn't want that committed to a recording for anybody else to have to listen to. So a few key lines from that song that I would love us to reflect on together. Come, O sinner, come and see Christ the Lord upon the tree. Earlier this week, I went to the hospital for an appointment to have my eyes looked at. Everything was fine, but uh, the, the process uh, for the investigation that I, I went through, I had to have some eye drops put into my eyes to dilate my pupils. and. Uh, Essentially what happened was, uh, I was told that I wouldn't be able to drive for a few hours afterwards ahead of going and uh, I didn't know it was because my eyesight would go really blurry. And what happened was, if I, uh, if I put my glasses on, uh, everything in the distance was just about visible, but it looked like I had someone else's glasses on, to be perfectly honest. And if I took them off, I couldn't even see anything in front of me. So I was a bit stuck really, I'd taken a book along with me in case I had to sit and wait for a long time, but I, as the, as the eye drops started to work, I couldn't see the page in front of me properly anymore. Um, so I, I had to give up and sit there in a room. I couldn't decide whether to leave my glasses on or not really because they weren't really doing much for me. And, and so I, I temporarily had blurred vision and I couldn't see anything that I was trying to look at. And we have this invitation in this, in this song to come and see the Lord Jesus Christ crucified on a tree. He becomes a curse for you and for I, dying in our place so that we don't have to go through that ourselves. And when we celebrate communion, when we look on, uh, on the wall in our church hall, uh, our cross that's on display every Sunday in the centre of the room, the, the cross is very clinical, it's very clean, it's got straight tidy edges. Whether we're using cups with wine and a wafer or whether we're using bread and little, little cups that we pass around with grape juice in. Again, it, it's, it's very clean and clear and simple and straightforward, very clinical. And, and I think what we're at risk of doing is losing some of the reality of what the cross looked like for Jesus. And we need to be reminded of that, I think. Uh, and so our invitation then for a few minutes together is to come and see Jesus Christ the Lord upon the tree, to come and mourn, for he bears the curse for all you've done. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at uh, our sermon series, Spiritual Detox, and we have this great invitation to confess our sins to God. And we, we had to come up with a working definition of what sin was, and sins are many. We try and categorise them, but there's no point really, because all sins are an offence to God, and all sins drive a wedge between him and his people. When we confess our sins, we see the faithfulness of God in action. We're pointed back to the cross where God's promises were fulfilled in Jesus. And that forgiveness of sins that Jesus bought for us on the tree means we get to live life in all of its fullness, close to God, and in God's presence, there is a fullness of joy. And so all those sins that drive a wedge between us and our Father have been dealt with by Jesus. But the cost was so great. Last week on Palm Sunday, we reflect on the fact that Jesus, as he entered into Jerusalem, entered in with a, with a welcome befitting a king. But it was a humble entry at the same time. And little did the people know he was going to have to be humbled further before he would be the triumphant king that everybody hoped he would be. And so in gazing upon the cross again this Good Friday, let me encourage you to think about what Jesus went through for our sins, whether we choose to confess them or not. Having been scourged with a, a whip, with a, a leather whip with pieces of bone and metal that were which was designed to tenderise the flesh and rip it off the back of the criminal who was being flogged. Often this would be enough to kill people, but Jesus survived and then he has to walk to the cross and he's so 
beaten and bloodied and bruised from what he has endured. He can't carry the cross beam himself, and so someone is called to carry his cross for him. Jesus is led through the streets out to the outskirts of the city of Jerusalem, where he is then nailed to the cross. Jagged iron nails driven through his wrists and his ankles in the in the nerve centres on the body would have been excruciating to him. He would have been propped up by his feet, which would have given him just enough support to be able to breathe in agony on the cross, to be fully aware of everything that was going on to him, slowly but surely drowning as his lungs filled with fluid, all for our sins. And as if that wasn't enough, crucifixion would often result in an individual's legs being broken because after a while even the Romans gave up on torturing people in this way and would break the legs of the condemned so that they could then hang and die finally. Crucifixion was so grim in fact that the, the Romans wouldn't even talk about it. There's a popular children's film that's just been released by Disney and in it there's a character called Bruno who is associated with bad news and the family are very often reminded that we don't talk about Bruno and this was the case with crucifixion. Romans wouldn't talk about it with one another and they wouldn't even do it to the worst of their own people because it was that bad. It's said that in Jerusalem at the time that this was being practiced, there were a group of wealthy women who exercised a mercy ministry to people who were suffering crucifixion. They mixed strong wine with, with drugs, essentially, that would be administered through this wine as, 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 the, as the punished were, um, were hanging there. They would be able to drink it and it would dull the pain so that they could endure what they were facing. And in Matthew's Gospel, it says that Jesus passed up the opportunity to drink this drink, he bore on our shoulders the full weight of God's anger towards sin. It wasn't dulled down for him at all, and he endured that, that we might be forgiven. Come, O sinner, come rejoice. Mercy fills the place of scorn, for he dies to save. Jesus says that greater love has no other than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus, the good shepherd of his sheep, lays down his life for us, that instead of facing what we deserve, we have the hope of eternity in our hearts. Jesus suffered and died in our place, that we would never have to go through that suffering ourselves. Jesus experienced the hopelessness and abandonment on the cross that we wouldn't ever have to feel that hopeless and left abandoned in our lives. The place where God's anger was being poured out, the place that we are thinking about for a few short moments together, is the place where scorn was exchanged for mercy. You see, just like I couldn't see properly after I had those eye drops put in this week, if we just look at the cross as a neat wooden um, symbol on our walls, if we just look at the, the death and, and burial of Jesus as a cup, a, a bit of bread and some wine, we miss the power and, and the dreadfulness of what Jesus experienced, all so that we don't have to. We have been clothed in righteousness. Our filthy rags have been taken off. We've been clothed with the very righteousness of Christ that when God looks at us, though our sins are many, we are forgiven, each of us equally. So let's finish with an invitation to come. To come and see to come and mourn, to come and rejoice. Hear the words of the chorus once again. Oh, the wonder of this awesome scene where our Saviour bleeds. Oh, the power of the love of God come and stand 
ている候補。Allow me to lead us in a short prayer this Good Friday. Loving God, precious Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our good shepherd, that you laid down your life for us, for us because you call us friends. We thank you that though our sins are many, they are forgiven because of what you endured on the cross for us. As we look upon the Good Friday scene in Scripture, in the words that I've shared with us, and in prayer in our imaginations now, Lord, help us not to miss the reality of what Jesus went through in order that we might be set free. Lord, we pray. For the church around the world. We thank you for the hope that we have and the challenge that Scripture brings to us, and ask that this Good Friday and indeed this Easter weekend, Lord Jesus, your name would be glorified. Where there is despair, would you bring hope? Where there is chaos, would you bring peace? And where there is doubt and uncertainty, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you bring faith? We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus, our crucified Saviour. Amen. And so on this first Black Friday, a reminder of what has gone before, what happened to bring us to the point that we are at today. We pause, we remember the generosity of God and the obedience of Jesus. And in the face of a stone rolled across a tomb in which the Saviour of the world had been laid dead, we wait for the glorious sunrise. Easter Sunday morning. God bless you and see you soon.